to these golden shores I was lost and forlorn. I'm standing with Howard Tisch, and this is his brainchild. Emma Lazarus, which we consider modern-day Miriam, um, is an incredible, incredible woman, and that's why we have this event today. But she really stood for the idea of rights of people, of immigrants and what it means to come in here and how you function within the country and she really stood up for liberty. We gather here at Emma Lazarus Plaza in view of the statue to commence the first annual Emma Awards, a celebration of leading Jewish women in arts and politics. We have the Oscars and the Grammys and the Cleos and the Emmys and now the Emmas. Emma Lazarus uh, I'm sure you all know, is best known as the author of The New Colossus, the poem inscribed on the pedestal of the Statue of Liberty. I'm honored to be part of the first Emma Awards in honor of Emma Lazarus, who wrote The Beautiful Colossus. Her words are words of comfort, consolation, and welcome as each man begins a new life of freedom and opportunity that is America. And the poet Emma Lazarus set your torch aglow and she carved these lines with all her love. She heard your spirit call. She breathed life through your longing like no one did before. One pearl of art, of beauty, thereof may be wrong. No pure-browed, pensive nif his muse shall be. An Amazon of thought shall sovereign eyes, whose kissed was poison man's brained, worldy wise. One of the great cabaret singers and a voice from heaven, Julie Budd. First of all, what an honor, what Thank an honor. You. What was it like for you? Well, it was a thrill. And to see the Statue of Liberty and to receive this award, you know, my grandparents came through Ellis Island. Really? Yes. And we have a little a little plaque in, in memory of their name, and as I'm sure a lot of families do. But to stand here yes. and, and to receive this yeah. award, is, it's very moving. You grew up in Brooklyn. Yes. Um, tell me your grandparents' names and your parents' names. and what, what was your Jewish life like as a child? Well, first of all, it was wonderful. And we'll never see times like that again. No. You know, <laughs> when kids could walk to the candy store and, and the rabbi lived on the same block and everybody went to the same shul and it was like a little shtetl, you know. And it was really, really lovely. And yes. I loved my life in Brooklyn. And you could never duplicate anything like that again. At what point does Julie Budd realize she's been blessed with an unusual voice? Well, How old are you at that, when that happens? I, I knew I was musical at a very, very young age. I always knew I was a musician. But the question is, when did I realize I was blessed? Every day I thank God for the beautiful life that music has afforded me and, and for the people that acknowledge my work. I mean, what more can a person ask for? Yes. If you had to pick at the moment the composer, the songwriter, and the song that touches you the most, when you sing it, somehow you feel it's Julie Budd expressing herself. Julie, what is it? To me, Gershwin was the greatest. Every, everybody sort of pales next to Gershwin for me, you know. Have you ever been to Israel? Oh, yes. Yes. What about Israel moved you personally, Julie? Well, there was a feeling of family in Israel um, that I never felt anywhere else in the world and there was a feeling that you instantly belong and you know it's kind of like that that feeling that I had in the neighborhood in Brooklyn you know we were just talking about you know that that I never ever got a feeling of belonging the way I did in two places <laughs> in Brooklyn and, and in Israel <laughs> Okay. Congratulations on the honor. Thank you, thank you. And thank you for a moment of time. Many thanks. Julie Budd. Thank you. Where is our Judah? Where is our five branch palm? Where are the lion warriors of the Lord? Clash Israel, the cymbals. Touch the lyre. Sound the brass trumpet and the harsh tongue horn. Chant hymns of victory till the heart take fire. The Maccabean spirit leap newborn. 
Again, I have the chance to stand with an extraordinary talent, Naila Karlbach, who also has been a recipient of an Emma Lazarus Award today. An exciting event, don't you think? It's amazing. I think that it's so special that women are finally getting a little bit of recognition through, because of what they've done and because of what they dare to say. As you look back on your career, to what extent did you feel you were doing something and had a feminine base to it, and you were aware that you were creative as a woman. To what extent was that true, Neela? Probably the, the greatest impetus was Shlomo, my husband. He really, really wanted women to have a place and a voice. And from the very beginning, he actually pushed me to speak, pushed me, pushed me to tell stories. He would announce me before I even knew I was going to be appearing. So he, he really, he was the one who said that women are going to be the ones who bring the Mashiach. He was the one who said, that's what the Baal Shem Tov said. He said, we had to get in there, we had to create something very special. So I was very fortunate. I was in the right place at the right time. Here you are, the wife of an extraordinary man, and then you create a career and a presence of your own. As you look back at your own career, is there one moment that stands out for you as a moment where you felt, yes, I'm becoming what I want to be? You know, I basically had an epiphany one day when I was teaching Torah, I was doing a Shabbaton in a shul, and suddenly the words took on a life of their own, and I felt like I was meant to do this, I was meant to give Torah to people, I was meant to share with people what it is that's the depth and the beauty of our lives. And um, that's what I love doing, it makes me feel wonderful. Neela Karbach, you are a real treasure for us, and I hope one day you'll come into the studio. We'll talk more. Anytime, thank you. And you'll you. do some more of your own material for us. I'd love to. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Neela Karbach, who's a recipient of the Emma Lazarus Award today. Honored to be so. You know, Emma Lazarus was a, a Sephardic Jew from a very assimilated, not religious, wealthy family, and she came into her voice as a Jewish prophet on her own when she was about 30. And she's known for the poem that was bid upon in an auction. All the artists submitted poems and then people bid on them and she got about $21,500 for this poem, The New Colossus. In my opinion, beyond that, her greatness lies in her having dared to champion the wretched among her own people at a time when wealthy Jews did not challenge American anti-Semitism. That time is upon us now again. When she was 30, Lazarus's Jewish consciousness was kindled by a combination of factors. First, she learned that Jews had been brut brutally and murderously treated in Tsarist Russia in a series of pogroms in 1881 and 1882. Hundreds of thousands of Russian Jews had immigrated to the United States, increasing America's Jewish population from less than 300,000 to almost 2 million. Lazarus met many of the Russian Jewish immigrants when they arrived nearby at Ellis Island, and she was moved by their poverty and their religious pride, which, again, I must stress, was foreign to her. She was also unexpectedly subjected to anti-Semitic writings in the American press. And this for her was the final straw. She responded with all her being in a passionate, even prophetic Jewish voice. And in my opinion, it required enormous courage and spiritual courage for a wealthy Jewish assimilated woman to take up the cause of poor, illiterate, non-English speaking religious Jews. So between 1882 and 1883, in a series of essays, guess what she did? She excoriated America's largely Sephardic and German Jewish population for their indifference to the fate of East European Jewry, similar to the indifference to the fate of Israelis under profound siege blaming them for that siege. So she wrote, until we are all free, we are none of us free. We have found freedom and peace. We have prospered to such a degree, she meant Jews in America, as almost to forget the terrors of the tempest. But a wail of lamentation reaches us from distant countries. Shall we remain deaf 
to their cry, shall we not rather exert ourselves to, to render a home for the homeless, a goal for the wanderer, an asylum for the persecuted, a nation for the denationalized? It will be a lasting blot upon American Judaism nay, upon prosperous Judaism of whatever nationality, if we do not come forward now. To fail in such an attempt is no disgrace. The disgrace is in not undertaking it. Yay, Emma. She had found her voice. As I, I must stress, no easy thing. You know, she was in like Flynn. She was an assimilated American. In 1883, Lazarus goes to London, and what's her mission? Nothing less than the establishment of a Jewish national homeland. At least she went to talk about it, and this was a decade before Theodor Herzl wrote The Jewish State. Lazarus argued for a Jewish homeland as a solution for persecuted Jews. I wonder what she'd say today but not necessarily for American Jews. In her 1883 essay, The Jewish Problem, Lazarus suggests that a sovereign Jewish Palestine, we are the Palestinians, might be a better solution to the Jewish problem than settlement in the United States. And this is partly what inspired her writing The New Colossus. And although she was well regarded in her lifetime, she died young at 38 of cancer. And because she was a woman and a Jewish woman, her work didn't make it into the literary canon. And to some extent, her family was partly responsible because um, her sister was a literary executor and a Christian convert, and she refused to grant rights to reprint what she viewed as her sectarian propaganda. I will let Lazarus have the last word. This is from a poem she wrote shortly before her death titled The Prophet. But thou, hast thou faith in the fortune of Israel? Wouldst thou lighten the anguish of Jacob? Then shall thou take the hand of yonder caftaned wretch. Thou shalt say to the bigot, my brother, and to the creature of darkness, my friend. Then in the obscurity thou shalt hear a rush of wings. Thine eyes shall be bitten with pungent smoke. And close against thy quivering lips shall be pressed the live coal wherewith the Srafim brand the prophets. Thank you. One of the honorees today receiving the Emma Lazarus Award is Phyllis Chesler, a woman who has done extraordinary work writing on feminist issues, on social issues, and on the state of Israel. What's it like to come down to Battery Park and be recognized and a recipient of the first Emma Lazarus Award? The, the truth is that I'm so used for, to being attacked for <laughs> taking a position that requires truth-telling and courage <laughs> that I'm a bit blown away. I mean, I think, what have I done wrong that now I'm honored and I now see how important a historical figure she was and how little known it is. Incidentally, can I ask, as you look back at your life, your childhood growing up, who your parents were, it had to come from somewhere. You don't become who you are by accident. I was involved with feminism in Israel and I became involved in Torah study and became one of the co-leaders of Nashim Shel HaKotel, the women of the wall who've been trying to daven at the Kotel. And that's a very important struggle, which we lost in the Israeli Supreme Court, mm -hmm. but the women continue to pray. As we near the latter part of the first decade of the 21st century, are you pleased with where the American social experiment is in relationship to accepting and welcoming women's roles in our overall society? There's been an enormous sea change and yet we are still in the desert. We have so far to go. Uh, so that while we have a greater understanding of, for example, domestic violence, including rape and incest and sexual harassment, that doesn't mean we've abolished it. And that doesn't mean that we can prevent it or rescue its victims. I hope there'll be other times for us to talk together. Okay, absolutely. Okay. Phyllis Chesler, who okay. received today the Emma Lazarus Award at the first Emma Lazarus Award ceremony. Thank you, Dora.
the honor of reading the New Colossus and, and how appropriate that we be actually being able to see the Statue of Liberty. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame with conquering limbs astride from land to land, here at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch whose flame is the imprisoned lightning and her name, Mother of Exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor the Twin Cities frame. Keep ancient lands your storied pomp, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these the homeless, temptest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. There is the Statue of Liberty. That is the poem that resides on it. Thank you, I'm very honored. We are free.